Okay. So we should, oh, I see people are joining us. So welcome everyone. Um, welcome to our webinar. We'll give people a few more seconds to join. I know everybody's probably trying to get on all at the same time. So we want to thank everyone for uh, attending this webinar with us today. Um, well, we do have a few more people joining still. So I'm just kind of monitoring that a little bit. Um, but I think as we get started, we'll just go ahead and do our introductions. Um, so welcome everyone. Um, this is a webinar for our virtual academy students and it's in regards to selecting courses for Fountain Park Carson High School for the 2021-2022 school year. So uh, specifically for students who will be um, coming back to Fountain Park Carson High School and we're looking at getting classes chosen for next year. So we'll just start right away with introductions. My name is Miss Martinez. I am one of the counselors here at Fountain Park Carson High School. We have two other counselors uh, joining us today for the webinar, and they are. Hi, I'm Miss Adranya. Um, I am a counselor for freshmen and juniors at the high school. And I'm Mr. Hastings. Um, I'm also a counselor for uh, freshmen and juniors at the high school as well. Okay, great. We have a whole team um, that helps support students at Fountain Park Carson High School. And we have a little screenshot there of all of our supports um, at our high school. So we're just gonna go ahead and jump right in and get started. Uh, just some quick reminders about a webinar. So in a webinar, we'll be presenting. Um, it's not interactive where people can per se like pop onto the screen. However, you will be able to, answer, uh, to ask questions via the chat. Um, we will allot some time at the very end of the webinar to review all of the top questions and hopefully we can do as many of those as possible. We do have to end our webinar right at 11, just because we have another meeting that's going to be starting. So um, we will also, um, we are also recording this webinar. So that way um, we'll get it posted on our website probably uh, early next week. And that way you can always review the information that's being shared specifically about the processes students will be going through to select their courses. So um, again, this webinar is for virtual academy students returning to Fountain Park Carson High School for the next school year. Um, students are going to learn today about high school courses and the planning processes. Students are going to also learn about how to enter their course selections into Infinite Campus. Entering course selections is going to help determine course sections. So that's the most important um, reminder is that um, don't be afraid like your students will uh, not be able to get classes that they want. We haven't built the master schedule. What we're doing is taking course selections right now. And then we determine how many sections of a course that we need based on everyone's course selections. And next week, our students at Fountain for Carson will be doing this process as well. Um, again, questions can be entered into the chat and we'll try to answer as many questions as possible in our time frame. And then also we'll remind people about this, but we're going to do some support sessions next Friday, um, specifically for helping students enter uh, their course requests into Infinite Campus. So there's two different um, information sessions we're doing today in this webinar. One is selecting your courses onto a Google form, the classes you want, your choices. And then the second piece is taking those choices and entering that into Infinite Campus next week. So we'll just jump right in. Um, just a reminder about courses and, and selecting courses at the high school level is we really do align our courses to the Colorado Clear um, Cluster model. So if you look at this page, you can see that there's business and marketing, public administration types of courses, agricultural, natural resources and energy. Um, there's STEM courses, arts, design, information technology. There's also areas of um, hospitality, human services and education. There's also health science, criminal justice, public safety, and then skilled trade and technical sciences. At the high school, we have classes that align to each one of these areas for the Colorado Career Cluster model. And I'm gonna talk a little bit about some of those classes right now. So for example, at the high school level, we do have a STEM pathway. We have um, information technology courses, which would be coding. We have the computer systems and networking career pathway sequences. We also have cybersecurity pathway as well. Um, we also have um, like the audio visual technology and communications pathway where students could take digital media classes, graphic design. There's also audio and visual production classes. So lots of great choices for students. Um, then looking at the hospitality human services area, there we have culinary career pathway. We also have an early education, um, childhood education career pathway. And that aligns to our teacher cadet um, career pathway too. So if any students are interested in becoming uh, a teacher or going into the education field as well. 
So thinking about marketing and business, we have classes that align to that career cluster as well. We have our DECA marketing classes. There's four levels of that class. We have accounting. Um, we have sports and entertainment marketing. So lots of really great courses that, that align to this, these other areas too. Additionally, for the health science criminal justice area, we have, of course, a biomedical pathway. And there are, there's a series of four years of courses that you can take in that particular category, especially if you're interested in going into the medical field, that's a great um, course pathway. Uh, again, we also have JROTC, that pathway to prepare you for many different fields as well. We also have agricultural food and natural science resources. So for example, we have agricultural sciences, environmental systems, we have environmental science courses, and even animal science courses, such as our ecology zoology classes. For skills, trades, and technical skills, we have woods classes. Um, we even have a, if you do woods one, woods two, you can get into the furniture building. Um, and there's, um, we also have metals and welding too. And so metals would be metals one and two. And then metals, after metals one, you could actually do welding and then metals two. So lots of great opportunities there. And there's also a program called the mill program. This program, um, students travel to Peyton District. There's a big warehouse they have high-tech equipment there. And if you're interested in the construction field or in furniture cabinetry, um, students who enroll in this program can get certifications for, for those different areas. And so if that's something students are interested in, um, we'd like them to maybe do a Woods One class at least here first at the high school, and then look at their at potential for entering this program. Um, students travel uh, to this program two periods out of the day, then they come back to the high school. Um, but it's a great program and they could, they could take it in multiple years. So just some great information. Now I'm gonna hand it over to Mr. Hastings. All right. So these are a list of all of our band and choir classes that we offer at the high school. Um, any of the uh, higher level bands or higher level choirs you will have to audition for. Um, so for band, you will talk to Mr. Race um, and he will set up auditions. Um, and then for choir, it's gonna be Miss Favila. She would be the one that you would audition for those upper level choirs as well. All right, so some of the questions that we get, um, this is a big one. So what is a prerequisite? So basically a prerequisite is just a course that's required um, as a prior condition for something else to happen or exist. So basically in order to get into some classes, you may have to take another class before it. So this example with graphic design, um, the prerequisite to get into graphic design one is digital media A and B. So as long as you have been in that class and passed that class, then you can look at going into graphic design one. Um, also, just when you're looking at these kind of course descriptions, you want to pay attention to how many credits it's worth, if it's a year long or a semester class, and then also the grade level. That one is super important because a lot of our classes there's classes that are for nine through 12, but there's also classes that are just for upper level. So you wanna make sure you pay attention to that as well. All right, so college and career planning. This is a big thing that we uh, do here at the high school. Um, so we have advanced placement classes. So these are our pre-AP courses um, for underclassmen. A lot of those advanced placement classes are pre-AP for freshmen, um, but we do offer AP courses as well. Um, to get into those, it just has to be teacher recommendation. Uh, we have uh, concurrent enrollment classes, both through uh, CU Denver and CSU Pueblo. I mean, concurrent enrollment classes are just classes that you can earn both high school credit for and college credit for. So our CU Denver concurrent enrollment classes are in chemistry. Um, and then our CSU Pueblo concurrent enrollment are science, history, and Spanish. And then another thing that we offer is our articulated courses for 11th and 12th graders. Um, so this is our Pikes Peak Career Start Program and then our International Spa and Salon Academy. Um, you would talk to us your, so the second semester of your sophomore year about if you're interested in going into this. Um, and it's basically there's classes for half the day at Pikes Peak Community College that you can be a part of. Um, there is an application process so if it's something you're interested in, you just need to talk to your counselor um, going into that second semester of your sophomore year. All right, so graduation requirements. This is another big one. So in order to graduate, you need to have a minimum of 24 credits. Now, some students, you know, 
by the end of their four years will have more than 24 credits, but you need to have a minimum of 24 credits. Um, that includes four years of language arts, so four credits of language arts. Um, that is three years of math, science, and social studies, so three credits in both of those. Uh, physical education, we uh, require 1.5 credits, so basically a year and a half of PE. Uh, health, we require 0.5, so just a semester class, and we really like um, freshmen, or, uh, freshmen and sophomores just to just get that out of the way as early as possible because you don't want to be a senior with a bunch of underclassmen. Um, fine arts, we require one, uh, one credit. Uh, world language, one credit. Um, and then academic electives, we require three. And general electives, we require four. So once again, just a total of 24 credits minimum. All right, so what are academic electives? So academic electives are any extra credits that you receive in your core subject area. So any extra ones that you get in English, science, math, social studies. So after you meet the required, so like after you meet three years of math, science, and social studies, anything extra that you take will count as an academic elective. Um, any world language after your first year, so after your first year of taking Spanish or German, anything after that is considered an academic elective. Um, our biomedical science track um, usually pairs two science classes together. Um, so because you do that, anything extra after you meet that science requirement because you're on that science track will count as an academic elective. Um, anything on our engineering track, our STEM classes will count. Um, if you're an AVID student, that'll automatically count. And then our Trojan Academy um, is something that we offer uh, ninth graders. It's only a semester class. It's the first semester, and it's by invitation or recommendation. Um, and this course is just to help kind of support that transition into high school. That, so that one semester will also count as an academic elective. And then another question that we get a lot of the time is what are general electives? So general electives are just gonna be any credit earned above the graduation requirements that are not connected to like, or needed for like academic elective credit. So basically anything extra that you get in fine arts, um, in uh, even if after you meet the requirements in academic electives, after you get your three, you know, your three years of academic electives, anything after that will count as general electives. So this can be, um, any of our fine arts classes, so uh, painting, drawing, ceramics, uh, sculpture, can also be our woods and our metals classes. Um, and also anything extra, if you're in band all four years, this can be band, uh, choir as well, and also could be like our JROTC programs. Too. Okay, so um, the screen, the picture that we're showing on the screen right now is a four year personal learning plan and graduation planning worksheet. And so when students fill out their course selections on the Google form, uh, starting a little bit later today, we'll get that link active for you. Um, you're gonna get also an email that will, um, with this form on there. And this is a great document that you could use to plan out your four years at Mount Fort Carson High School. So the nice thing about this form is it shows you the, the subject areas on the left. You can see then what credits are required for each one. And then you can circle the classes and keep track each year of what you're passing um, and what your next year's classes are your, that you want to take. And so that really allows you to really be strategic about what kind of pathway you want to pursue, especially if you're going to do a class that's a multiple year class that has a beginning level class and a, a second level class. So this is a great document. Um, you should get this in your email after you finish your a Google form. And so you can use this to really plan out uh, the next four years of your high school and really make it meaningful. All right. Now, so, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so it's my turn. Um, I'm going to talk about um, waiving credit requirements. Um, before that, I saw some questions in the chat that I could answer right now. Um, so this, this will be recorded, um, so parents and students will have access to this again, um, so you can rewatch if you need to. Um, also, there's a question about, are these classes uh, for virtual academy or in-person? They are for in-person, so this is returning to the high school. Um, so I just wanted to answer those really quickly. I saw those there in the chat. Um, so waiving credit requirements. Um, just like Mr. Hastings was talking about, all students um, must enroll in a full year of math, science, and social studies. 
for their first three years of high school. Um, you also must have English um, all four years. So if, um, you know, you get to your senior year, you might have a little bit of uh, freedom. Um, but I know some students think about other ways to maybe take care of their academic elective credits or PE credits, for example. Um, so there's good news. If you take JROTC, for example, you can see that you can get half a credit of PE waived. And what that means is that the credit doesn't count towards your 24, but it waives it. So um, and most students, if you pass all four years, right, you'll have more than the credits you need. So that's how the waiver will work. Um, JROTC two, you can get a credit of PE. Uh, three, you can get a credit of PE, or you can see um, a credit of academic elective, and same for JRTC4. Um, so that's really nice for students that want to participate in these other types of classes, but might not know how if they have these requirements to get. Um, so this is a way around it. Um, another activity that can count as PE is marching band. Um, and also, uh, sports seasons. <laughs> Sorry, I was reading the chat again. Um, they might, so you might compete in, uh, for example, a season of cross country, um, and that would give you a half a credit of PE um, if you would like to do the waiver. Um, and those, we just have the academic electives listed again here. Um, next one. Um, so selecting high school courses. Um, so you might be wondering if you're an upcoming freshman, um, what classes can I take? So you obviously will take all four core classes. Um, some of you might be taking a more advanced core class, um, for example, accelerated geometry, or um, some of you might be taking algebra one now, right? So you might be taking an upper level math class next year. Um, so it just depends on your grades and different assessments. Um, your current core placement and reevaluation and recommendation over spring and summer. Okay, um, elective courses are selected by students and parents. Um, so this is what you are going to do in Infinite Campus um, later. And um, typically, if you are a rising freshman, we want you to take health and foreign language um, in your freshman year. So we're going to make sure that you request those two. Um, in your request list. Um, so next steps. It was really important to review the courses in our course catalog. One, so you know if you meet the prereqs. Also, so you know what grade level it applies to. Um, so we have our course catalog on our um, counseling main webpage. And um, for freshmen, if you're wondering like what what courses can I take? We do have in the Google form that you will fill out later, it tells you specific um, freshman courses because the full course catalog has everything the high school offers. So just be aware um, that that Google form will help you know which classes you can take. And Miss Andrania, I just saw yeah. a little error on here that I put on there, but um, the course catalog is actually located on the Fountain for Carson main webpage and not on the counseling one. At least this one's not on the counseling one. This will be on the left sidebar on the main Fountain for Carson webpage. So that's where you'll find those. Ms. Martinez, I actually didn't know that, but I when I said it, I didn't realize that. <laughs> 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 so... Um, Oh, this is you, Ms. Martinez. You me, yeah, I, I can just, so so then um, later today, um, there's going to be a link that's going to be active for you. And it's it's going to be right above the webinar uh, link that you clicked on to attend the webinar. And it'll, it's going to look like this um, over here where it says FFC Virtual Academy Return to Fountain for Carson Course Selection Form. This is just a Google form, and it's going to give you an option to look over the classes that you can take. And then it's about, okay, what classes do I want to take next year? So then you're going to enter those into this form. And it's probably going to have you start with a world language, possibly, if you haven't already taken Spanish or German. It might start with that one. But you're going to select your top courses. And this link will be active probably just a little bit after we end the webinar. So check it a little bit later today. And you can start entering your 
course choices. Then you'll receive that email that will uh, give you, it's gonna list the choices that you selected and it also should give you a copy of the four year planning sheet as well. So um, when you click on that active link, again, we'll make it active just a little bit after this webinar, um, you're gonna see a form that looks like this screenshot right here. And the nice thing about this form too is that it actually has uh, a link to the course catalog so you don't have to search for that all over. So that link will be there. And then it also has a link to a ninth grade, incoming ninth grade um, course offerings. Because if you click on that big catalog, it's pretty thick. Um, so if you're an incoming ninth grader, you could just click on this link and then get access to the courses that a ninth grader can take because it's a lot less. All right. So hopefully that'll be helpful there. And then so that's the so really there's two things that you're going to want to do through this presentation. One is talking about filling out that course choices on the Google form. The second piece, which will happen next week when it becomes open, is you're going to enter your classes into Infinite Campus. Um, so you're going to choose your classes on the form, and then the next step is to get those entered into Infinite Campus so we have that in our system. So we're going to talk, we're going to shift gears a little bit and talk to you about how do you enter those classes into Infinite Campus. Okay. Um, Ms. Martinez, before we move further, I just see a lot of questions in the chat about is this for Virtual Academy? Um, I'm just going to say it again, this is for in-person, so if we're returning to Fountain Fort Carson High School. Um, we, I don't, Ms. Martinez, we don't know anything about Virtual Academy um, yeah, as so, far as next year, right? right. So we're, yeah, we're not um, involved in those conversations. Uh, the purpose of this uh, webinar is to help students who are returning back to Fountain Fort Carson High School enter their course choices um, into first the Google form so they can choose the, what, what am I going to take and then the second step is to enter those into Fountain for Carson. Now if you are a student planning to attend Virtual Academy um, they might have a different process for how you're going to choose your courses. Um, that is not what we're focusing on on this webinar uh, right now. This is really for students who are returning to Fountain for Carson High School. I hope that helps. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, thank you, Ms. Martinez. So um, I'm going to talk about how uh, the process will be an infinite campus, and um, this will open up, correct, right after the webinar? Um, or so, yeah, so the, the Google form where they're just going to choose their classes, like last year, kids used to just write it on a piece of paper, and then they bring that to school, and then we help them enter it in infinite campus. But because of COVID, we're not having a lot of paper processes and of course and a lot of you are virtual right now so we did that same process but it's just a google form so that's the link that's going to be active as soon as we finish um, this webinar we'll, we'll give it a few minutes and then that'll be active and then when i um, starting probably on monday is when the um, in infinite campus a portal that's going to open up and you can take your course requests and then enter them into Infinite Campus. So what we're gonna do now is show you how to do that process. But that's probably not opening up until um, Monday, and then you should be able to do this process then. But we will have some support sessions on Friday, and we'll talk a little bit about those at the end of this meeting today. Okay. Um, so when you get into Infinite Campus, um, it's pretty straightforward. Um, you're gonna click on the More button. Uh, Oh, I lost my presentation here. Can somebody switch the slide for me? I don't know why I can't. <laughs> okay, yes, I did, uh-huh. Oh, thank you, <laughs> it did switch. Um, and then you're gonna click on course registration and um, 21, 22, uh, Fountain Fort Carson High School. And it's going to take you to this screen um, where you have your course requests. Now, we're not sure. Um, some students might have their core classes already loaded. Um, some students may not. It just depends on um, the Infinite Campus system. Um, so if you do have your four classes, um, core classes listed, you are going to add courses until this bar is 100%. So you'll see that bar at the top um, will change to 100% after you're done adding all your requests. Um, now, if you don't have your core classes, you might not be able to get this bar to 100%. Um, a just good general rule of thumb is we want you to put at least eight requests um, 
in your request on Infinite Campus. If you, let's say you haven't taken foreign language yet, um, we really recommend you do that first. So add your foreign language, either Spanish or German, to your request first. And then keep in mind when you're adding requests, you want to add um, your top courses first. So your top choices um, in order. So your eighth one should be the one that um, is your eighth choice, if that makes sense. And so when you um, add courses, you click on this add course button. And I believe Mr. Hastings is gonna show us how um, or Ms. Martinez, I think, is going to show us how you can read about the courses and what they are. Sure. Or did you want to do this part, Mr. Hastings? Oh, no, I think it is me, huh? So, <laughs> okay. All right. So, students, and uh, so when you're in Anthony campus and you've gone through those steps, and again, you can watch this video because we'll get it posted probably early next week, and you can watch it, and it'll walk you through step by step. But the first thing you're going to do is you'll either see your classes here if you have your course entered. If you don't, it's okay. We'll get those entered later. Just know that you might not get to that 100% bar yet. Um, but you can click on Add Course. It's that little blue button at the bottom. And then you're going to see a list of all the classes you can take at Fountain for Carson High School. So the first thing you want to do is using that choice form that you selected all your classes is start entering the top choices first. And if you haven't already chosen your world language, make sure you do that's the first thing you want to do. And you actually have to enter your world language twice because you have to enter semester A and semester B so you can have it all year long. So we'll be checking that you've entered A and B so you can get that all year. Um, or if it's Spanish 2, you'll do the same thing. It'll be Spanish 2A and Spanish 2B. Um, other classes that you have to enter twice for the full year is JROTC. That's another one where you have to do JROTC semester one and JROTC semester two. So keep that in mind as you're choosing your classes. Um, but you'll come over here to the left side and you can actually click on the class and the plus button, which we want you to do, because once you do that, you're going to see a course description. So the great thing about the course descriptions is you can review those prerequisites like um, can I take this as a ninth grader? Um, is this a class that's going to be year long or just semester long? Um, it'll also give you a good course description. We had a lot of incoming freshmen asking us about, well, I don't you know, like this ceramics course sounds really interesting, but what do you do in that class? So we encourage them, hey, why don't you go click on that definition or the description? You can kind of get more information. So this is a great place for you to get information. Again, you can also read information in the course description guides too. So after you've read this information, you're like, yep, that's a class I want. You're going to click down here at the bottom and where it, that little blue button where it says add request. So again, if you don't have any core classes in there, you're going to be adding at least eight requests. And then, and then if you, you can add more if you want, but you'll be adding at least eight. If you do already have your core classes listed in there, then um, still add at least eight classes, but you might have to add a few of them as your request. And then it might get to a point where it's going to say you're full, like you can't add any more. And then I'm going to show you how you can still add some more. So keep entering them. Again, you click on request. And then if you, as you're adding them and you get to that green bar, then you're going to see a little button up at the top that'll say you can't add any more requests. If it does that, then you can still add more classes, but just add them as alternates, which is the second button right here. And you'll just click them as alternates and add at least two to three alternates if you get to that window. Now, if you're a student who has no, um, like none of their core classes are entered, then for those students, just please add at least eight classes in there for us, okay? That'll help us be able to get you scheduled. So again, just some quick reminders. Um, remember to select A and B courses for first semester and semester, second semester classes, so Spanish or German, and then same thing for JROTC, those classes you'll have to enter um, at both semesters. And then again, we're looking that you get to 100% or 30 units. Um, it's really that 100% that we're looking at, but if you don't have your core classes, you might not get there because usually those core classes help you get to that 100%. And in that case, just go ahead and enter at least eight choices for us, okay? And then when you're all done, the nice thing that you can do is if you, if you get to the point where you've entered all your requests, you're going to click on this print button, and that's going to give you the opportunity to download these classes so you can remember what you selected. And to do that, you just click on that print button, and then you're going to click on this little down arrow right here, 
Once you click on that, it's gonna give you the option to save um, and you can save it on your desktop or in Google, but someplace where you'll be able to find it later on so you remember what you chose and put into Infowire. Okay. Um, Mr. Hastings, he's just going to give us a couple reminders. We're almost done with the webinar, but here's some reminders uh, just to help students out. Okay, so just some important dates. So our rising freshman night um, for like it's a virtual family events coming up on March 1st um, at 6 p.m. So it'll be a virtual tour. Um, you're going to learn about classes and programs. Um, you'll learn about clubs and sports as well. Um, and just there'll also be a, a little like virtual scavenger hunt as you're doing this too. So while you're watching videos, you'll see like a little letter pop up, write it down. And at the end of the event, you're going to be able to type in whatever it spells and earn some prizes. So it's something that's kind of cool. Um, also make sure that you guys are uh, looking at, um, you know, classes and programs and those extracurricular activities that you're actually, that you're interested in being a part of. We really want you to make high school count and make it something that's meaningful to you for the next four years. So when you're doing that, make sure you guys are really just clicking on things and looking at things that really are just interesting to you. Um, that way you get the best experience you can out of high school. Um, another thing we'll have is our, uh, our infinite, infinite campus support sessions. Um, we'll have those next Friday on February 26th. There's gonna be two of them, uh, one at 10 and one at, and one, at 1 p.m. Um, the link to the support session will be posted um, on Thursday, 20, uh, February 25th, on the Fountain for Carson Main Counseling Center webpage. Um, and then also just after we're done with this webinar, um, this webinar uh, will be access, you'll be able to access this webinar um, to see the recorded one in the same area that you uh, clicked on to get to this webinar today. So it'll be, um, be right there for you um, probably at the end of today. If not today, it'll be there for you by Monday for sure. So. Um, and then just once again, you know, while you're looking at your classes, make sure you're getting into classes or second classes that you want to be in. Um, it's making, once again, it's that whole thing about making your high school experience count, making it the best possible experience for yourself. So don't, don't put electives that you're going to absolutely hate. Really look and see what they are and get into the ones you want to be in that you know you'll be successful at or at least be very interested in. So... I agree. I think um, the more you can get into classes that you think might be applicable to what you want to do after high school, you're giving yourself some foundational knowledge in a lot of those different areas. So very good point, Mr. Hastings. Um, so I think we have some time for some questions. And I, for some reason, I can't see the chat on my screen, but um, are there other questions that we need to answer? Yeah, I can monitor this for us. Um, and then you can answer some of these, Ms. Martinez. So um, let me see what we haven't answered yet. Uh, maybe can we let's see, just uh, talk about again where that Google form is located. Okay, good. Um, and I think I can, I'm going to go back in the PowerPoint just real quickly so I can show folks where that is. So the link is there, um, You, I mean, the words are there, but it's not active quite yet. And so it's gonna be on, I'll get back to that page. So right here is where the Google form link will be um, active. And so you'll, it's on the Counseling Center. This one is on the Counseling Center main webpage. If you scroll down, there's these announcements right here, and then you're gonna see where it'll say, um, and right now it's not active, but as soon as we finish this webinar, I'll go in and make it active. So students can click on that link, they'll fill out the form with their course choices. So that'll be your step one, you can do that. And then of course, after that, starting next week, students can log into their Infinite Campus and follow the directions to actually enter those choices into Infinite Campus. I hope that answered that question. Perfect. Um, I have a question here. When would the um, latest be that they can request classes? So what's the deadline? Oh, that's a really good question. So the to make your course choices in Infinite Campus, that's the most important thing. Um, you have to have that done probably by Friday, next Friday. Perfect. Because the um, window to access that in Infinite Campus is going to close. Okay, I think that answers that. Um, for AP classes next year, um, we have a student that was in Virtual Academy. Um, 
who would they talk to about recommendations for AP next year? That's a great question. I think that they would, um, it depends on the subject area, right? So probably I'm going to say the first step would be to reach out to their high school counselor. And they, of course, all of the counselor's contact information is on our main webpage. So you can see what your last name is and what grades you are and who your counselor will be. Uh, just keep in mind that um, like our current listing, if you're a current um, ninth or 11th grader this year, then you're, that's who your counselor will be. And then if you're a current, it's based on your current year. So if you're like a 10th or 12th grade, then you can see the breakdown of counselors for this year. So I would suggest you reach out to your counselor for this year at the high school and then um, have the, like ask them that same question about, okay, I'm interested in taking an AP or pre-AP course for next year in this subject area. Who, who can we talk to to make sure I can try to get into that class? Okay. Um... Sorry, there's a lot coming here, so I'm gonna <laughs> do my best to answer all of them. I pro we can do our best. Um, so, okay. Um, if somebody is unsure about returning to in person, um, they can still pick classes, correct? Yes. Yes. Mm -hmm. Go ahead, Mr. Hastings. <laughs> well, I was I was gonna say yes. Um, yeah, just in case you end up coming to in person, we want you to have those. Um, that way we have the right amount of classes, like class sections made. Um, if you end up going to virtual academy again, if it's offered or its own, its own thing, um, that doesn't hurt your student if they put in the classes, if they're gonna come back. So I, yes, I would do that. Um, we're doing that for, if there's any military questions too, if you're not sure if you're gonna move, still make those selections just in case you don't move that way we have the right amount of set, like number of sections we need to make. And also you already know what classes you might be able to get into. So yes. Um, looks like we have a couple of questions related to um, IEPs and um, special education. And I'm just gonna answer this in general because we have questions about, you know, what, how are they gonna get the classes they need? Um, typically we will, um, work with case managers once students come back um, to ensure that the schedule is created correctly. Um, we still want students to go through the process of um, requesting courses and then schedule changes can be made, it, made as needed um, for those specific situations. Is that right, Ms. Martinez? Is there anything we should add yeah, that. I think I think too, um, because I think before prior to families uh, or students moving to virtual academy, those who may have an IEP, um, I think they did like a transition meeting. So I would imagine mm -hmm. that when you're also coming back to Fountain for Carson High School, they will um, hold a transition meeting and and uh, invite the counselor, and then we can um, then we'll we'll assure that students get the the appropriate classes that that helps based on the support. So yeah, I, I would imagine that they would be doing the same kind of a transition meeting back, and then that way we can assure that you're back into those classes that you need to. Um, also, I think there is just one more general question. I know um, we have some eighth grade students who are in like Spanish right now, or maybe a higher level math class um, and just wondering placement. And again, that schedule changes might be made, right? Depending on recommendations and how the year finishes. Um, and so just because if you might see like a global studies as a core class, but you might be thinking, well, my student's going into AP um, human geography. So that might change, right? Like global studies could change based on um, what we learn over the summer and how the year finishes and then placement can be adjusted as needed. Um, so it's not necessarily set in stone. Hope that answers that question too. Um, I, oh, there's one question and I'm not sure, Ms. Martinez, you might have to help me. <laughs> um, it says, does the girls soccer um, last year, would that count towards credit um, since they did everything up until school was canceled? Um, so it, there wasn't a full season, correct? Um, yeah. I 
that's a great question. And I think it, the, to get the waiver, um, it is about starting and, and completing the season. So um, that's the biggest thing. I know there were some questions about like, for example, tennis, same thing, didn't get to finish. And so I'm not sure what grade our student is that's asking that question, but if there's some additional years to play, then that can still help. And I think we are still having a girls soccer season this year. It might just, I think it's gonna happen later. So um, there's still the opportunity to participate and then finish a season that waiver. Good questions. Um, sorry, I might have missed this. Um, there's a question about Friday tomorrow or next week Friday. I think oh. that's referring to the deadline. Yes. Oh yeah. Okay. So yes, it's not today. <laughs> so that would be way too fast. But so um, just after, as soon as we finish our webinar, um, just give me a few minutes and I'll get the link active for the Google form where you can just dig into that course catalog, read about the classes, and then put your choices into your choices into that form. Then you'll get an email that'll say, hey, here's the classes you said you wanted to take. And here's the four-year planning sheet. And then you're going to use that information for next week to enter uh, your courses into Infinite Campus. So, and then if you have some troubles or you're, it's hard, we're gonna, um, we will have a support session next Friday and um, that will be Friday, February 26th. And, um, but, but in the meantime, if you're okay to go ahead and enter those in starting on Monday, you can go ahead and get your courses entered into Infinite Campus. And again, um, probably Monday we'll post this video and then you can go back and watch it again to go step-by-step step through this process. Hey, Ms. Martinez, could you show them the uh, slides about the Google form again that they're gonna be looking at and where to find it? Uh, yes, I can do that. So let me go back really quickly. So the Google form, you know how you, where you clicked to access this webinar? Um, the Google form is on that same main counseling center webpage, or maybe you got an email and that's how you clicked on it. But how to get to the form is you're going to go to the Fountain for Carson main webpage. You're going to click on where it says departments. Then you're going to scroll down. You'll see where it says counseling center. So you'll click on that link. Once you click on that link, you're going to see a like um, a main counseling center webpage where it has like our pictures, uh, the, the our emojis, and then underneath that main section, you're going to scroll down. You'll see links that look like this one on the right. Scroll, scroll all the way down, and then you're going to see where it says FFC Virtual Academy Return, and you can see that there now. If you go to the counseling center webpage, you can scroll down, and you'll see that link now. It's just not blue because it's not active yet, but once we finish this uh, webinar, uh, we'll go in there, and we'll make it active for you, okay? Mm -hmm. All right. It looks like our chat is... Um, quiet now, but I'll, I'll, we could give a little bit of a few seconds to see if anyone had another question that wasn't answered. Yeah, if there's any other questions, um, now's the time to ask those. I think there was a question about um, who the ninth graders, the incoming ninth graders counselors are going to be next year. Yes. Oh, that's a great question. So currently, the ninth graders for incoming ninth graders, um, if you go to our Counseling Center main webpage, it will show us as 10, 11, I mean, 10, 12 counselors. So the counselors that are the uh, sophomores and senior counselors, we will be the ones who have freshmen next year. So I will have freshmen with last names H through O. Miss McGlynn will have freshmen with last names A through G. And Ms. Sanchez Jones will have freshmen um, that will be P through Z. Great question. All right, I think looks like um, we are good to go. Ms. Okay, so just, just remember that on Monday, if you're an incoming freshman, we have that virtual rising virtual family night and the link to access that will be on the Fountain for Carson main webpage. Um, there should be a little button on the left side. You can click on that to, to access that virtual event. And then on Friday um, next week, 
but that's the last day, of course, to enter your courses into Infinite Campus. But we will also be providing some support sessions. There'll be a half an hour each, and there's going to be links posted on the Counseling Center main webpage on Thursday. It'll be right underneath your Google form that you're going to click on that link. So uh, we'll, we'll be able to help you out that way, too. All right, we want to thank everybody for um, joining our webinar today. Give us a few minutes and we'll get that link active for you. And we just hope you have a great rest of your weekend and be safe. Miss um, Martinez? Oh, yes, uh-huh. Um, we have a question. Uh, sorry, we have one more question pop up here. It said, okay. um, can I have the phone number of the counselor for incoming freshman last name A? Um, I'm just going to put my email in the chat um, so that way we could send it um, that way. Yeah, that's great. Yeah, that sounds good. And again, all of the, just to remind our, all of our families that all of the counselors contact information will be on that main counseling center webpage and there will be email addresses and phone numbers. So just, that's just for all of our parents. Um, you can find that information there as well. But if you send your, um, it sounds like Miss Andrania will be able to um, put her email link in there or address and then that she can get that information to that student or family, so right away. Okay, well, we hope everyone has a great rest of your day and good weekend and um, look for this video to be posted next week as well. So anything else, Mr. Hastings or Ms. Andrania, before we conclude? No, that, that everything sounds great. Okay. Well, if there's anything, just send us an email. You can use my email too. That's in the chat if you need to. Awesome. All right. Well, take care, everyone. And we look forward to seeing you all next year for sure. <laughs> all right. Take care.